Hi, I'm your host, Didi Che. Audio Builders TV presents Why Guitar Players Should Care About Electronics. This is a multi-part series presented by John Snyder. John is a PhD student at Boston University and is the owner and chief engineer of Electronic Audio Experiments, a small batch manufacturer of stomp boxes and tube amps. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and sign up for our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Audio Builders Workshop is a work group for the Boston chapter of the Audio Engineering Society. Hey everybody, I'm John from Electronic Audio Experiments uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, resistance, voltage, and current. Uh, one of the most fundamental rules of all electronics is what we call Ohm's Law. Uh, it can be represented as V equals IR. Uh, voltage is equal to current times resistance. Voltage is electrical potential energy. It's the ability to move charges, uh, at least in most cases, through a wire. Uh, it's going to show basically how, how hard those are being pushed through. Current is the flow of charge. Uh, it's basically electrons moving with time. And uh, you can kind of think of it as like the, the sort of flow through this uh, pipe that is formed by the wire. And finally, we have resistance, which is slowing the flow of charge. Uh, when you have current going through a resistor, you end up uh, dissipating energy in the form of heat. And so these three quantities are related. Your potential energy is pushing current through the wire and then you dissipate energy. So uh, here's a funny representation of Ohm's law where you can sort of see volts pushing amps through this wire and ohms saying, no, you can't go through that wire. Uh, it's just a representation of, of this sort of you know, literal resistance that's happening. So uh, when we draw electrical schematics, there are a whole bunch of symbols we can use. And here are two very basic ones. One is just simply a voltage. Uh, you can see the plus and minus terminal. And the other is a resistor. We can use voltage sources and, re and uh, resistors to model all sorts of things. So uh, when we talk about uh, connecting things together in a schematic, uh, you often hear the terms series and parallel. Uh, resistors and series and parallel are going to combine in different sorts of ways. Uh, the value of a resistor is in measured in units of what we call ohms. Uh, and so you'll typically see a resistor with something like a kilo ohm, which is 1,000 ohms. If you put three of those together, you're just going to add them up. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see here that uh, the equivalent resistance of a series combination will just be R1 plus R2 plus R3. If they were all 1K, you'd get something like three kilo ohms. In the parallel case, it's a little more complicated. Uh, if all the resistors are the same, then you just end up dividing. In this case, it'd be a one kilo ohm over three or about 300 ohms. Uh, a very common example of a circuit you'd see with just resistors is what we call a voltage divider. The voltage divider uh, is formed by taking a pair of resistors and then taking a voltage off the middle of those pairs. Uh, in this, you can see the formula for it here, but an easy one to remember is if those two resistors are the same value, you'll essentially get half of the output voltage. If you think of something like a volume control on a stereo, uh, that's changing the ratio of these two resistors to show how much uh, output voltage you're getting versus the input voltage. Now, when we talk about voltages and resistors, uh, you can put them together uh, on their own, but what's more interesting is if we use them to model something real. Uh, one su such example is a combination of a source and a load. Uh, in here, we have a Fender amplifier uh, where the source is the amplifier and the load is the speakers in the cabinet. Inside the source is something very complicated. Fortunately, we have the ability to model this as a simple voltage source. And with the source load model, you can see we have the voltage of the source represented as just a simple source. And then you have the output resistance of this source. Uh, a real source is going to have some output resistance, uh, which is basically showing uh, what, you know, how much you can actually get out of it. It's like a limit on how much voltage you can get out of it with a given load. Uh, and then, of course, we are representing the load as a resistor itself. And this can be a speaker, it can be the next thing in your signal chain, or something else. And the relationship between our source and our load is going to show you how much power and how much signal you get into the next device. Uh, for the case of the amplifier, you typically want our source and our load to be the same. And this will give you what we call a maximum power transfer. Uh, in something like a guitar being connected to an amplifier, you want our load to be much higher because as we saw before with the voltage divider example, if those two values are close to one another, you'll get a loss of signal. 
Um, a very popular use of this is in the classic buffered versus true bypass debate. Uh, in a buffer, uh, our source is going to be very, very low, and therefore, you, therefore you'll get less signal loss. In an unbuffered situation, you may have a very high source uh, resistance, which can cause signal loss. And uh, that's how Ohm's law is going to apply to audio gear. Thanks.